Ryan Fox is with us right now on the Oakland County Megacast. He is the founder of Fox Gives Socks. This is so great about what you're doing. You're a college student. How did you come up with this? Well, so first off, thank you so much for having me on the show. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm a recent OU alumni, and uh, during my time at OU, I had the privilege of volunteering at a number of clothing banks, um, including the Baldwin Center in Pontiac. And during my time volunteering at the Baldwin Center, um, during my freshman year, um, I met a lot of wonderful volunteers, and I became aware of a problem. And that problem was that right before winter came, um, oftentimes they would run uh, out of socks. So that would leave a lot of folks uh, with housing difficulties, low income folks out, you know, out of socks for the whole winter. And in a state like Michigan, you know, having socks at night could be the difference between losing toes and not losing toes. So um, I saw a need there and uh, I want to do everything I could to fill that need. Uh, for those that if, if anyone has actually volunteered with the homeless or you go out on the streets and you see people, the first time you see anyone's feet look the way they do because they didn't have the proper product protection and um, it, it's horrifying. It, it breaks your heart. And there are just so few things that little simple things as a pair of great new warm socks can make a huge difference. So thank you for what you're doing. And with that, how did you get this campaign started and where do you hope it goes? So we first got started um, over the summer um, is when I originally kind of came up for the idea. And, uh, you know, with the goal of trying to gather um, as many socks as humanly possible to then distribute um, I had to come up with how would I gather those socks. So I came up with a few different um, collection methods, including um, uh, setting out drop boxes that people can donate socks and um, creating an Amazon wish list so that people, um, you know, we do live in a COVID world, as you guys were talking about before the commercial break. Um, and uh, we, I wanna make, wanted to make sure that people had a safe, clean way to donate. So the Amazon wish list is a way to do that. Um, it's all contact list delivery and gets sent right to one of our volunteers' houses. Um, so getting started really just using the internet, um, using social media to get the word out and, uh, really just letting as many people know, you know, come and donate. It's a way that you can help. It's a great way to make an impact. And, uh, in the future, I hope to make it as big as possible. Um, our motto is until no foot is cold. And, uh, that means we really want to make sure that, uh, eventually no foot will be cold at night. So I want to keep going, making it bigger and uh, expanding it until eventually we're able to help clothing banks throughout Southeast Michigan and who knows, even beyond that, all across the country. And do you want to talk about some of the organizations that you are supporting with this donation effort? Yes. So for this um, first sock drive, which is going from October 19th all the way until November 16th, um, the two organizations we'll be donating socks to are um, the Baldwin Center in Pontiac, a great organization that I have a lot of experience with but also Crossroads for Youth in Oxford, which helps um, young people aged seven to 17 um, that come from difficult uh, backgrounds. And a lot of times these kids arrive for their education and they don't have socks. So we wanna help um, get those kids set up for success any way that we can. Do you wanna talk a little bit about your experience that you had with Baldwin Center, just about what they do, but also how it impacted you as an individual? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was a, a wee freshman, only 18 years old, uh, when I volunteered with them for a class. And um, during my time there, um, I made a connection with a lot of uh, the different um, volunteers that were there as well. And there was one, um, there, or her name was Terry, who I became you know close with and she taught me how to do a lot of, you know, how to fold clothes, organize them, get, get them sorted, um, and then help, you know, help people pick out stuff. And uh, right before I left, she, she grabbed me by the arm and she said, don't forget about us down here. And so that really stuck with me as kind of a call to action where she wanted to push me to do something. And this is my way of uh, trying to do something. So while I was at OU, I uh, worked with many of the different clubs there um, and was able to organize kind of small scale, scale sock drives where the students and some of the staff donated. And now I just want to take that and make that bigger. So. Ryan Fox with us, founder of Fox Gives Socks, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. And Ryan, I would imagine during a pandemic, uh, as we're in at the moment, it, it can be tough to get more people involved in donating socks. Of course, you got the Amazon wish list that helps that be done in a 
uh, in a touchless variety, but, but for those that don't use Amazon or prefer not to purchase items over the internet, they may still want to go and, and physically deliver mm -hmm. socks. And you have an event coming up next weekend uh, that will allow people to continue to do those in-person donations, but in a safe manner. Would you, may, would you like to uh, give us some more information for those that may be listening and want to help your organization here soon? So if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of rhyming as well as alliteration. So the event we have coming up on Saturday, November 7th is called um, Socks and Sweets. And the idea is, you know, it's a week after Halloween, so we figured people might want some of that, um, you know, cheaper candy as all the stores are starting to sell it for cheaper after Halloween. Um, so what you do is uh, King of Kings Evangelical Lutheran Church has been so kind to let us use their um, parking lot. And so um, donators can drive into the parking lot. Um, we'll have a bin there, uh, volunteer masks and everything. We take the, you know, the virus very seriously. Um, you just drop your socks, and they have to be unopened packages of socks. That's very important. You cannot accept used socks right now uh, because the clothing banks. So we uh, hold out the bucket. You guys just drop your uh, packages of socks into the the bin. We take it back, and then we'll have pre-packaged little bags of candy um, that were organized safely, and we'll give you the candy, and you are good to go. Thank you for the clarification, because I will say I was immediately saying, oh, my God, I have this huge thing of socks <laughs> when uh, because uh, we have like this, I don't know, this sock thing and you clean out your closet and there's like a million pairs that you have, but it, you need them to be new unused. And uh, since you started this, what has been the response? Oh, um, I've been incredibly happy with the response um, so far. Um, we're into our we're finishing up our second week of the sock drive and we're already at over 450 pairs of socks um, many of which have been donated online but also through our drop-ins um, another way that people can support us is just by contacting our facebook page or our instagram and just um, setting up a drop off with one of our volunteers um, good chance it might end up being me um, and i would meet you at a public location and we do the sock drop off that way and so all of those have been employed and we've had a really great response um, you know like i said 450 pairs that's no small feet in such a short period, uh, period of time so uh, pardon no, the feet pun, it, 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 yeah, <laughs> I think that's great that's, that's awesome but it, it's great what you're doing and I think it will it one pair, a hundred pair, it's making a difference in so many different lives so thank you for what you're doing and I will say uh, put a part put aside the individuals that are receiving these and what it means to them how has this impacted you personally and who you are as a person and where you want to go in life? Well, I guess, wow, for me as a person, um, it's been very humbling. Um, I didn't expect such an outpouring of support, especially as you know, you mentioned before, it is kind of a rough time, um, not just for our country, but for the whole world. And uh, it's really truly been amazing. I have people who I haven't talked to in years who are donating socks and you know, sending me little messages and that's been incredibly heartwarming to see. Um, I guess on a personal level, um, I'm really excited and I think that we could make, you know, Fox Give Socks something that is, you know, truly has a big impact in the greater area. And I would be honored to be at the head of that effort, really make a big impact for my community and my neighbors. At, on a personal level, how is this shaping who you are as an individual? I guess who I am as a person, um, I've learned an awful lot. Um, about the, how to run things, how to um, advertise on social media. I'm not uh, a millennial that's very tech savvy. I kind of fall out of the uh, the norm for people my age. That um, is outside the norm, <laughs> very much yes. so. No, I was, um, you know, I, I've struggled before with using things like Facebook and Instagram and whatnot, but I've learned an awful lot. My sister-in-law has been horribly helpful. She uh, actually got a degree in communication from Oakland University. So she knows all about that stuff, so she's taught me an awful lot. I owe a lot to her. Um, but yeah, in terms of skills, I've learned an awful lot. Um, I've learned, you know, from this drive what I would like to do in future drives a little bit differently um, to make them bigger, better, and uh, you know, more efficient. Get more socks gathered and get them to the right place and everything. So, yeah, I guess just in terms of skills, I've learned a lot. Um, and as a person, I think I've learned how to. You know, I, th I think I've learned how much of an impact a little action can do. Because this really did just start as some crazy idea I had over the summer. And uh, really materialized into something very special. So I think I've learned how much of an impact a small 
act of kindness or a small little effort can really can be. Yeah, and on top of that, from an individual standpoint, even people that are struggling who maybe don't have a lot of resources right now, one pair of socks, you can donate that and make a difference in someone else's life, but also make a difference in your life as well. Right, exactly. You know, um, one thing too, I encourage, obviously, you know, we'd like to get as many socks as possible. So bulk groups of socks are great, but sometimes just donating a simple pair of like goofy pineapple socks can make a difference for somebody. Cause a lot of times people don't, you know, if you're struggling, you're, you're a low income individual. You know, I, my family struggled being low income growing up. And sometimes you, you never get to own like a pair of goofy socks. So donating a pair of goofy socks can really, uh, you know, boost somebody's spirits, you know, might be the first pair of nice goofy socks they've ever owned. So even just one pair of socks can make a huge difference. Ryan, so far as you've been going through this process and collecting these socks and donating these, these socks, what has the reception been from those organizations that you are donating these socks to or even directly from people that are receiving these uh, in terms of how thankful they are to your organization, to the people that are supporting them through your organization? Well, I think uh, one of the funnier, nicer moments throughout this whole process was when I first uh, made a phone call to Crossroads for Youth about the program. Um, I am good friends with somebody who is an employee over there, and they were the one who first tipped me off saying, well, hey, they could probably use some socks. So I, you know, I called them up and asked, essentially, like, could I, I donate socks? And the, the woman I spoke with, her name was Wendy, was um, hilarious. She, was, she sounded so, she was like, oh, oh, certainly. Oh, yeah, certainly we could take some socks. <laughs> like she was so surprised and excited by the by the call that it really uh, it got me excited because I was like oh yes okay wonderful we'll get you socks <laughs> that's great um, so I know and, and Baldwin Center as well you know I've spoken to them um, back when this first started as well uh, you know and they approved me being able to donate socks as well so long as they're unopened packages and uh, they were also equally excited and so the organizations um, especially given a time with that economic hardship that's come from uh, COVID. Uh, unfortunately, people aren't as, well, they aren't able to be as generous as they were before because a lot of people, their expendable income has suddenly vanished. So uh, being able to do an effort like this is really helpful and helps bolster them up at a time of need. So it, they've been incredibly thankful and incredibly receptive. So. Brian, uh, quickly before we let you go, it, what advice would you give to other people, not only young people, but anyone out there who has felt in the heart that they wanted to help an organization or a cause in a way, but felt they didn't have the resources. And to see you do this and just jump into that, what advice would you give them to actually take it from their heart to actually making it happen? Well, all you need is the courage to take the first step. And I know that sounds horribly cliche, but uh, for me, I had been wanting to have some sort of impact, some sort of uh, you know, ability to affect all the craziness in the world going on around me. And really uh, the wonderful people in my life that helped me, that helped push me into taking that first step. Um, really the first step was all it took because you'd be shocked at how receptive people are to help. You know, we have many organizations which have um, agreed to you know, have drop boxes in their stores and in their um, locations. And you would really be surprised at the number of people that want to help you help other people. So all you really need is that first step, making that first connection, and you would be shocked how far it'll go. Ryan Fox with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. He is the founder of Fox Gives Socks. Thank you so much for your heart and your enthusiasm to be able to make this happen and to change so many uh, different lives. It may seem like a little thing, but for those on the receiving end, it is actually a big thing. So we wish you continued success in the middle of a pandemic, no the less. But uh, you're doing amazing things here for our community. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was very honored to be here and I appreciate it greatly. So uh, quickly, though, if people do want to give, um, how can they do so? Yes, absolutely. So the first thing I would do uh, is recommend following our Facebook page and our, or our Instagram because both give updates about the drive and where to donate. Um, we have four Dropbox locations that you can visit. Um, Oakland University has one in their Office of Student Involvement. 
Um, the restaurant Vibe Nutrition on Updike Road has a Dropbox. It's a nutrition club. It's fantastic. Um, New York Burgers and Grill in Troy at Crooks and South Boulevard is another place you can stop by. Um, also fantastic. And then finally, the Oxford Chamber of Commerce. If you're up in North Oakland County, um, you can swing by there. It's in the same building as the Oxford Police Department. So stop by any of those four locations or just message us. We're more than happy to meet people and gather socks you know, in public places like and we'll come meet you at the local Kroger. Uh, so, yeah, just let us know, and um, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, that's great. Quickly, though, uh, I know you have an Amazon wish list. How does that work? Yes, so Amazon wish list. Um, thankfully, Amazon makes it um, horribly easy for uh, nonprofits and other groups um, to get uh, gifts. So, essentially, all you have to do is follow the link that's on that, uh, that Facebook page. Uh, we've shared it a few times, and it's also listed as, like, our website. Um, you follow that link and then you purchase one of the items we put up. We have tons of different options, bulk gr- uh, groups of socks, which are a little more on the expensive side, but also cheaper ones, um, socks for all ages and uh, age groups. Um, all you have to do is order one of those items, select that you want to ship it to Fox and it'll ship it right to um, one of our volunteers homes. That's great. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And thank you to your volunteers for also getting involved Again, it's something that may seem little to so many people, but it's actually making a big impact in other people's lives. So thank you for having the heart to not only recognize the need, but also to see it through and to turn it into action. So uh, Ryan Fox, founder of Fox Gives Socks. Get involved, make a difference.